The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا بالقاسم محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم على آله الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم دكتور العزيز so we're continuing now uh, to the phase where the Quraysh have run out of options they've had enough the, they're noticing that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is gaining power yeah. and they need to act fast. They want to get rid of him yeah. ASAP. So, um, what, what happens? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin al-Ma'asumin Wa la'na al-Abidiyya ala a'da'ihim ajma'in Um, Quraysh were very angry, probably the anger was the highest mm. it had ever reached uh, during the stay of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in uh, Mecca. Um, and they said, they called for a meeting in a meeting house, Dar al Nadwa, uh, 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 a conference center if you like, or kind of a place where they meet and discuss. And of the course, top the chiefs of the, the clans the top, and the yeah, wealthy, the chiefs and the uh, the nobles, the chiefs of Quraysh, uh, different clans of Quraysh met there. It it is said that uh, um, there were forty who attended that mm. meeting, and it is said um, as this, this is given in Tafsir uh, Qumi, if you like. Um, Iblis also came in the shape, in the form of a, an old man and um, at the door uh, they said to him, who are you? He said, I'm a sheikh from Najd, from the people of Najd and um, I have, I would like to advise the people here and I have some um, advice for them and some opinion. <coughs> After a bit of haggling, they said, okay, allow him, let him in. Let him in. <coughs> and Abu Jahl started speaking and they said, um, this Muhammad was a, a nice guy. He was trustworthy. He was called Al-Amin. Um, and it, we called him Al-Amin because of his uh, conduct, because of his honesty and truthful, truthfulness. And... Uh, he was very tr tr trustworthy because we could uh, trust him with our uh, precious things and he would return them to us. But now he's got, into, he's got this into his head that he, he claims that he's a prophet, he's a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, he is uh, uh, criticizing our beliefs mm. and um, ridiculing our gods. And not only that, now he's forming a base in Medina and he's getting more and more people. And I'm very concerned that the only thing which is left is some of the chiefs of Quraysh to embrace Islam, to accept him. And this will be disastrous for Quraysh and for the standing of Quraysh. The fact that people from all around uh, the land, they come for pilgrimage and we are responsible for the Kaaba and we're losing authority. And I see that we have no choice but uh, to kill him. And they said, how do you suggest we do that? He said that we'll send um, one of our warriors uh, to kill him. 
And uh, if Beni Hashim ask for blood money, then uh, for dia, then we'll give, we'll give them ten times. What is required for blood money for one person, we'll give them for t ten times. What do you think? They said, that, that sounds a good idea. We're generous. We like Beni Hashim. We're, it's just that we, the, our problem is with, with, with this guy, Muhammad. When we get rid of him, we give them ten times. This old man, this Iblis, he said that, he said that this wouldn't work. This is a stupid idea. <laughs> what do you mean? He said, well, if you kill him, even if you give them ten times the blood money that they usually give, Bani Hashim would not rest seeing the Qatil, the killer of Muhammad, walking around in the streets and alleyways of the city. They will go after him. So basically, who is prepared to go and kill Muhammad, but he basically he, he, will, he will sacrifice himself because he will be killed. Is there anyone amongst you who, who is prepared to kill Muhammad and be prepared to be killed by Bani Hashim? Because they will not, they will not stop at that. They will not stop at the accepting the deer, the ten times the deer. Valid said, point. They said a valid point. <coughs> um, someone else said, I have a different opinion. Is that we uh, um, detain him in a house, we give him food and water until he dies. <laughs> so we haven't killed him, and um, uh, we can. Uh, uh, put a stop to all these activities of Muhammad. Iblis again said, this wouldn't work either. This is even worse than the other one. He said, why? He said, uh, they will, <coughs> Bani Hashim, while he's being detained, they will go and seek support from other Arabs, either from the, those who come and visit us during the two Hajj seasons, or uh, they go outside and seek support from the other Arabs uh, to come and fight us. Because they would have an excuse. We have, a we have detained one of their sons. So even that wouldn't work. A third person came and said, I have a, another opinion. And they said, what? And he said that we uh, ex send him into exile. We get rid of, we're rid of him. We don't want him here. And Iblis, again, this old man from Najd, who was Iblis, he said, that they will, uh, this is even, this is worse than the other two, because he, w he will personally be active, seeking support. All the people of uh, those who will support him, when he gathers them, he will come and mm. uh, take over Mecca. And they were really speechless. They couldn't, uh, he said, what do you suggest? Now you keep saying this, this is wrong and this is wrong, but what do you, have, what do you suggest? And he gave his famous suggestion that what you should do is, uh, you have 40 chiefs um, of 40 clans. So from each clan, one warrior comes, okay? And they, they attack the house, or attack him, simultaneously with a single blow. So all of them, each of them say, give them so that they don't say, this was the first one, this, was the, this warrior was the last one, no. Uh, simultaneously, they strike at uh, Muhammad and kill him uh, with a single blow. So that, uh, and if 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 Bani Hashim decide to fight the tribes or the clans of the killers, they will have to fight forty clans, and that would be something impossible for them to do. And they all like that idea. Of course, they said, oh, this was cunning this was a genius, cunning and very mm. genius um, idea." So they decided for that. And it was at that that um, um, an ayah was revealed. وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ So those who disbelieved uh, are plotting. So basically is this ayah is revealing this. this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing yeah, what they're doing. What they're doing. This conference mm. uh, uh, held, this, this meeting, that... They are uh, plotting to either detain you, or kill you, or send you into exile. Now they are doing plots, and Allah will advise something contrary to that. Of course, the advice, 
uh, of the of Allah subhanahu wa taala was uh, Jibrail informed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he has to leave for Medina because uh, they are going to kill you tonight. Um, uh, so this was, um, and in fact, some of the narration give the names of the individuals, um, some of the individuals, um, if you like, the 40 so-called warriors um, who wanted to come and kill. And amongst those names, there are various other names. Among those names is Khalid ibn Walid, is one of the people who uh, was amongst the, those 40 who wanted to come and kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, while he was asleep in his bed. Uh, so this, how it um, uh, was revealed uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi asked, uh, informed Imam Ali alayhi salam that um, Jibra'il has informed me of the, revealed this ayah to me and I have to, uh, I'm instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave for Medina and um, on, on my way to Medina, I have to stay in uh, Ghar, the cave called Ghar Thawr. And um, will you stay in my in my bed while I leave so that um, they don't um, realize I, I, I've left, they don't realize that the house is empty? Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam immediately said, will you be safe? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi shows Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam only concern about is Rasulullah sallallahu and well-being of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Couldn't care less about himself. Mm. Um, he said, uh, Allah informs me that I will be safe. And then it is said that he was, Imam Ali was smiling. Oh, subhanallah. He was only too pleased that he mm. would do that. <clears throat> and out, out of his, his joy, he uh, he prostrated on the ground uh, uh, to say thank you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Page Sajjat al-Shukr. And it is said that this was he, Imam Ali was the first one to do Sajjat al-Shukr. Oh, really? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Wa kana Ali alayhi salam awwala man sajjadid illahi shukra. Subhanallah. Imam Ali alayhi salam was the first one to prostrate to, on, on the ground to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that Allah has said that he will be safe. And he was honored, Imam Ali. Mm. He was honored that he um, he will stay in the in the in the in the place of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even though that meant, of course, he didn't talk about this in this conversation. Even though that meant that he will be killed. Forty men are coming with their swords and going to attack and to strike him as a single blow. Um, and Imam Ali didn't even hesitate. What about my well-being? What's going to happen to that? Um, and, and the Prophet said, it's a very um, interesting comparison that Allah uh, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests individuals <clears throat> and um, the awliya, those who are devout. And the greater your iman, uh, uh, the greater the test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the greatest tests are for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And he said, Allah has tested both of us, you and me. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim uh, alayhi salam and Ismail. Because what happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to uh, Ibrahim that uh, to slaughter his son Ismail, to sacrifice his son. And Ibrahim accepted. And he informed Ismail that um, I'm instructed that I do this to you. Mm. And Ismail accepted. Now, of course, it's very hard for Ismail to accept for this to happen to him. And it's probably even harder for Ismail, for Ibrahim to do that to his son, to his beloved son. Yeah. But it shows the amount of uh, Iman, faith they had to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows the Iman, but it was this, so, uh, in the same way, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was, has been asked to place Imam Ali alayhi salam in his bed. And Imam Ali was, extreme, was the most dear to him mm. amongst all his relatives. Ahabu 
uh, uh, nasi ilay. The most beloved of all people is Ali alayhi salam. Now he's he's instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to expose Ali mm. uh, um, in such a to such, such a danger. So it is it's a test for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and it's a test for Imam Ali to accept that. Which of course he um, eagerly and happily accepted. And as I said, he was smiling uh, when he heard that the Prophet will be okay and he was honored that he would do that. Um, so, um, and of course, I want to say that um, uh, there is a, on this occasion, when Imam Ali accepted that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this uh, ayah from the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ اِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ uh, and there are those who, who would sell their souls, sell themselves, uh, seeking the pleasure and content of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and um, it is said that in a hadith, and it's given in Amal al tusi page uh, 469, that um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said to Jibra'il and Mikail, uh, if I... Um, if I want to give a longer life to one of you over the other, who would favor his brother? And they remain silent. That means, they, you know, they wanted to live the longer life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you go and congratulate Ali, who has stayed for the safety of, of the Prophet sallallahu has stayed in his bed, and he is in imminent danger. And they, they descended to Imam Ali alayhi salam, and they congratulated him on this, and they informed uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam of the revelation of this ayah وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ إِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ And of course this is also given in various Sunni references and Sunni tafsir um, like Al-Thalabi, like Al-Ghazali في الأحياء uh, and also in Al-Ghazali كيمياء السعادة and um, um, various other uh, scholars, Sunni scholars, as well as Shia scholars. And uh, in here, there are numerous uh, references which are given. Um, uh, al Musashid ibn Jarir al Tabari, Shawahid al Tanzil, Al Thalabi for his tafsir, Usd al Ghaba, Fadal Amir al Mu'mineen, Sa'd al Saud, and so on. So there are numerous uh, uh, tafsir and references to say that this ayah was revealed about Imam Ali alayhi salam. Subhanallah. Okay, so. <clears throat> so Imam Ali eventually sleeps in the bed of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. Rasulullah escapes w by himself. Does he leave Mecca alone? He leaves Mecca with Abu Bakr. With Abu Bakr. Yes. He, uh, um, there is also someone else who was the guide. He's called Hind ibn Abi Hala. Okay. Um, he takes him to the, to the, to the it's, it is said that I take him to this, and he instructs him to go back mm -hmm. to inform Ali that they've arrived at the, at the cave. So this is one, one narration, but uh, almost all narrations say, and it's um, almost universal acceptance on both Sunni and Shia scholars, mm -hmm. that uh, the person who was uh, in the cave with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was Abu, ba uh, Abu Bakr, and, um, uh, uh, and of course, they stayed there before they left for Medina when, if you like, the dust settles. When they were, Quraysh were seeking them and trying to... How long did they stay in the cave? It is said that they stayed there uh, for three days and three well, nights. That's quite a long time. It's really... All along, Allah is talking about, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ Don't you support him, which is the Prophet. فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ Allah gave him the uh, victory, which is the Prophet. Uh, while the, the disbelievers forced him out, forced him being, being the Prophet sallallahu alaihi Allah descended his sakina upon him. And the point is, he didn't this, then the, doesn't say فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتُهُ عَلَيْهِمَا on both of them. Um, Allah only descended the sakina on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and not the not Abu Bakr. Uh, and whereas in other verses of the Quran states that Allah وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَىٰ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah descends, descends His sakina, His tranquility upon His Messenger and upon the Mu'mineen. 
but not in here.